Hello, my name is Martin Eder. I'm an associate professor working for DTU Wind and Energy Systems and my speciality is numerical, structural analysis and material science. Today's lecture will be about the fatigue phenomenon, meaning that we will focus on the observations we can make on material level when we talk about fatigue. After today's lecture, you should be able to describe the concept of fatigue damage on a material level. You should explain the driving mechanisms of high cycle fatigue in metals and explain the driving mechanisms of high cycle fatigue in fiber polymer composites. I have chosen those two materials because those are very well represented in wind turbines. Let's start with an experiment. So we take a paper clip and we bend it open in that way. And uh, we might ask our question, how can we separate that paper clip without uh, using any cutting tool or other tools, just using our bare hands? And you might want to pause the video for a moment to think about the answer. Now the obvious answer is that we take the paper clip in our hands and we wiggle it up and down like this. It's a cyclic loading situation. Until we feel that the material softens up, it also gets warm and it separates. So one thing is that we could feel that there is some damage accumulating in the material as it softens up. But the most important thing is that I was able to separate a very high strength steel wire with the low force of my hands. And I would not have been able to separate the paper clip just by pulling it apart. So what is fatigue? Fatigue is a progressive and accumulative deterioration of the material induced by cyclic loading. We can see fatigue as a stochastic process that increases the amount of disarray in a material, it increases the entropy. And the cyclic loading amplitudes are typically uh, way below the material strength of the load. Fatigue initiates on nanoscale progresses on micro scale until failure eventually occurs on macro scale and that shows that fatigue is actually concerning all characteristic length uh, scales and this makes fatigue one of the most challenging subjects in engineering. It is maybe also not worthy to mention that fatigue is closely interlinked with thermodynamics. Now if we start to look at metal fatigue we need to ask ourselves what drives the deformation of a metal. And in order to answer that question, we have to observe that metals are special because they are crystalline. And crystalline means that the atoms making the material are arranged in a very strict repetitive pattern. And we can actually see them as a array or a sum of different unit cells stacked on top of one another. Now, if we apply a stress shear stress to a stack of atoms and then uh, we can ask ourselves so how can we move this part relative to that part when we apply that stress and the obvious answer would be maybe we want to uh, sever all the atomic bonds here and move everything at once but this is not how nature works rather we will have some local um, defects in the lattice structure which we call dislocations and it's those dislocations that move step by step through the lattice along the slip plane. So we can say that the deformation behavior of metals is dislocation driven. If we zoom out a little bit from the atomic scale and we start to look at a small structural component, it could be a tensile bar with an initially perfect surface and we subject it to cyclic loading conditions indicated by these blue arrows, we see that we will have dislocation motion along those slip planes I have shown with these thin black lines. Now, although we reverse, perfectly reverse the loading direction from tension to compression, we don't change anything otherwise, it so happens that the material does not go back into its original uh, position but rather we are creating extrusions and intrusions in that material by motion of dislocations along those persisted, persisting um, slip planes. Now if you continue to doing that, we will affect uh, one grain from the surface, but then the fatigue damage spreads into other grains as the, slip plane, as, uh, the dislocations will go along those slip planes and affect other grains and we keep on doing that 
until uh, the grains will separate and we are forming uh, eventually what's called a macro crack. Once we have a macro crack in a material, then we see here in this animation that after every load cycle of that uh, uh, macro crack, we create a lot of uh, plastic deformation ahead of the crack in the crack tip because the stresses and strains are very high there. And so after every load cycle, this crack leaves behind a specific mark on the surface, which we call striation. If we take many striations together, we are forming beach marks, which are shown on this fractograph. So it is very uh, important for engineers to, if they look at a failed component, if you see these kind of telltale marks, the beach marks on the fracture surface, you will immediately know that this part has failed in fatigue. Now this slide shows two failed bolts as part of the same connection uh, joining a wind turbine rotor blade with a hub. And it will be you to find out what actually was the failure sequence and what happened by answering the questions of the quiz. If we shift our focus now from metals to composite materials, we first need to define what is a composite material. So a fiber polymer composite material comprises of glass or carbon fibers, which are, have a very high strength, and which are embedded in a polymer matrix. If we zoom into the polymer matrix, we see that the polymer matrix consists of these uh, main chains, which are connected by those links. Mostly the polymers we use in fiber composites are thermosets and the thermosets have very strong crosslinks here giving the polymer its strength. But what is quite obvious by looking at that simplified picture is that the structure of a polymer is amorphous. And although there exist semicrystalline polymers, there are some regions in the polymer that are still amorphous and that's completely different to the crystallic structure of a metal and that already tells us that the fatigue damage mechanism in composites is different. If we take a piece of composite material shown in here and we align the fibers skew to the loading direction which is in the horizontal direction then we will create after a while a crack in that a fatigue crack in that material. We can zoom into this region which is depicted here in this idealized figure so I have shown here the fibers separated by the matrix material in between. So what will happen in the initial stage of a fatigue uh, loading situation composites is that we form these small micro cracks in the polymer rather than the fibers. And we actually can observe these micro cracks in these micrographs taken with a scanning electron microscope of a composite material. Now we can take one of those plies, as we call it, in shown in the previous slide, and stack them on top of one another. And then we can form uh, what is called a composite laminate. So in this composite laminate shown in here, we have fibers that are oriented in the loading direction. We call them the load-bearing plies. So we have these axial fibers. But we also have fibers which are, in this case, perpendicular to the axial fibers, and we call them transverse fibers or cross plies. Again, if we subject such a laminate to cyclic loading conditions, we first start with stage one. And stage one is signified by a very fast drop of this initial stiffness. And in what happens in this region is that we are forming these micro cracks in the transverse layers, as shown on the previous slide, because the stresses in the matrix are the highest. If we continue cycling, then the density of these micro cracks will increase, but after a while it will flatten out and reach some sort of a plateau or a saturation. It's at that point where the delamination cracking starts. And what it means is that those small micro cracks in the transverse layers, they start to grow into the load bearing plies and they start to grow along the fibers, which we call the delamination cracks. If we continue that process, we will enter stage three, that is the final stage, and that is what's called the fast fracture, where we will have fiber breakage. So more and more fibers in the load bearing plies will, will break, and at some point those fibers will not be able anymore to sustain the fatigue load that has been applied. And then uh, the composite laminate fills. <laughs> 
So in summary, in this lecture we have learned that fatigue is a progressive and accumulative material damage phenomenon that occurs under cyclic loading conditions. Fatigue affects all length scales as we have seen and can be distinguished into three stages. It is stage one, the fatigue crack initiation, then we have stage two is the fatigue crack propagation and the last stage three is a fast fracture and failure. The prevailing fatigue damage mechanisms, and that's important, are not the same for different materials as we have seen. There is a huge difference between metals and composite materials, for example. Fatigue in metals is dislocation motion driven, whereas fatigue in composite materials is driven by polymer matrix cracking, leading to subsequent uh, delamination and fiber breakage. Thank you.